Welcome to today's workshop. This is a 30-minute workshop, a series we call D2L in Small Bites. We're trying to uh, help you use a little bit of the lunch break time here at the noon hour to learn some interesting things about D2L. So this week, um, we're going to talk about how to use the new class progress tool to monitor student engagement in D2L. And this is a tool that's new with the latest release that, that we've adopted version 10.1, um, which we started with over the fall 2013 semester. So again, thanks for coming today. And our goal, as I said, is to get you up and running with this tool in 30 minutes or less. So uh, hold tight. And uh, you know, you, you may be sort of resembling the person here in the, the picture, trying to eat your lunch and watch this workshop at the same time. Uh, that's quite all, quite all right. Before we move any further, too, I just wanted to make you aware of our spring semester 2014 drop-in hours here in the LRC. You can come by any of these days and times that are listed for um, drop-in lab support. So um, again, this is for faculty. No appointments necessary, and um, either myself, uh, our instructional development coordinator, or our ed media specialist will be here to assist you. No problem is too large or too small for the drop-in times, so please be sure to come and see us. We also have these resources for help. Uh, you can email us at this address, um, give us a call, or come by as well. Okay, so a little bit about what we call the class progress tool. Um, you may have seen in the past what's called user progress in D2L, but with the um, adoption of D2L version 10.1, we have what's called a class progress dashboard. And this is really nice because it allows you to really quickly view um, your students' progress um, across four customizable domains. And, and we'll talk about those here in just a second. But what's nice is this is really that snapshot of your class, you know, where you can see 20 or 50 or more students kind of all on one screen and quickly get a sense for um, how they're doing in the class um, across these customizable domains. So you can include things such as um, their scores on Dropbox assignments, how many content items they've looked at. Um, and again, that's when they click on the content item. You, you can't be sure that they actually read it, but they did display it on their computer. Um, you can see their login history for the course or the system. You can look at things like their grade items and, and see a bar graph with different trends. And this one is really handy as well if you're trying to monitor engagement. And that's where you can see, if you're using discussions in your course, how many posts a student has authored, read, and replied to. And I'm going to give you a visual here in just a second, and I think you'll agree that it's pretty powerful. So again, if you're teaching um, a distance education course, that would be a, um, an online, hybrid, um, online or a hybrid course, then we do have the requirement through our accreditation to maintain what's called regular effective contact. So again, this tool um, really helps you to monitor that student engagement to make sure that your students are engaging with the coursework, and then you as the instructor can also engage them um, individually or as groups. Another nice feature of the class progress dashboard is that not only do you see, um, and I'm going to actually go to the next slide here because it's a little more visual for you, you can see across these different domains um, here you can see you know here's content here's discussions grades and then some login information but also what's nice is if you want to drill down into a specific student's activity and you can go beyond the four um, domains that show here you can just click on the name of that student and then you'll see a page that, that gives you a lot more information so this is really a super helpful tool not a lot of faculty are aware of it right now. So um, given that we're in the first week of the semester as we're recording this right now, um, you know, this is really handy when you're trying to manage your course roster during this first ad drop period and see who's really engaged in my class. <clears throat> Do I have students who haven't read any content, who've never logged in, who've never even read a discussion post or, or similar um, activity? This is really a nice tool for you. Um, 
We'll come back to this at the end, but also if you want to learn more about this tool or any of the other tools that we have available um, in D2L, we have lots of um, information up on the web. We have uh, D2L version 10.1. Uh, it's, it's really like a working manual with lots of screenshots and step-by-step -step directions. So you can see that at that first bullet. We also have um, a full set of on-demand video tutorials that we've produced. And you can see those on YouTube. Uh, and our, our channel name is Sac City Online. So if you go to YouTube slash Sac City Online, you'll see a whole suite of videos that we've, we've created here. We also have the distance education website. Um, that will be moving once um, Sac City has our new web platform fully um, up and running. But for now, that's our address. And we have lots of information, not only about D2L, but also about teaching through distance education in general. And then, again, the drop-in lab sessions, as we discussed before. And if you're new to D2L, there's a set of instructional videos from a company called Atomic Learning. You can view these for free, and we've shortened the URL for you here because it's a really long, uh, funky URL. So if you go to uh, bit.ly, it's bit.ly, slash D2L videos, you'll um, get a listing of those as well. So having said that, Again, if you have questions, um, you can type those into the chat pod and I'll do my best to answer. But let's go ahead and jump into D2L and, and we'll take a look at this in a little bit more depth. All right, so now you should be able to see uh, that D2L screen. I'll just make it a little bit bigger for you here. And so here we are in a, um, a D2L course. It's just a um, standard course that we use and um, we're on the home page. What we need to do here is um, to access that, that um, class progress dashboard is we're going to go through edit course. And of course, you're used to going to edit course to uh, make lots of changes to your course, the home page, the, uh, the navigation bar, et cetera. We'll click edit course. And here you can see um, that you have a list of tools, and they can either be sorted by name or by category. By default, most people have it set up to, to list by category. Um, but what we're going to look for is called, and it's a little bit misleading here, um, but it's called, where did it go? <laughs> I'm used to the other, uh, other setting. Let me go back to name. View user progress here. Um, so even though you're going to see class progress, they haven't quite updated this link title. Um, but view user progress is what you're looking for. So you can find that easily in alphabetical um, sorting mode. And if you are in um, category mode, it's here under learner management. So we'll click view user progress. And by the way, this is just a sample class. So you may see some, some names in here, but the individuals, um, the scores do not reflect their real actual effort or work in this course. So this is the dashboard itself. Um, so you can see I have a listing of students here. And I've set this one up to show me um, the four domains. First, I have content. So students who go to the content tool, how many items have they visited out of the total? Right. So currently, I have 50 items available. If I only had 10 items available, then you'd see how many they visited out of 10. So my first student here, you can see, has visited 88% of the content. It's actually pretty good. Um, we can look next door on the discussions domain and see how this individual is doing on discussions. And you can see, wow, you know, I already read 102 discussion posts. That's fantastic. Um, has posted four times and has replied to someone one time. So I would expect this student um, to be very engaged in the course um, at this point. They're looking at the content, engaged in the discussions. Um, but look, we have a little issue. There are two Dropbox assignments that have been made available in this course right now. And this student, for some reason, has not completed any of the Dropbox assignments. So that might be something I'd want to follow up on, um, particularly over time if I start to see a trend happening there. Um, we also have um, grades as the next category. And so you can see what's interesting here is, again, this student seems pretty engaged in content and in discussions. But I had some flat lines on grades and then, then some top ones here. So 
One of my favorite features about the class progress dashboard is actually you can hover and you get live updates for each of these items. So you can see as I move my mouse, I'm seeing the, the grade items and the scores that the student got. So these, these three green ones look pretty good. Let's see what this low one here. Uh, we had a low attendance score. Um, and of course, that would probably be retitled participation these days, but uh, this is from an old class I was looking at. And, um, and then here's a quiz. Oh, got a zero on a quiz and a zero on, on the course outline, which was actually one of those Dropbox um, assignments, and a zero on the plagiarism plan, which was the other Dropbox assignment. So again, um, just by looking on this screen, I can see um, what the grade history is. I can see that there's a little problem with getting those Dropbox assignments in. And uh, if I wanted to dig a little bit deeper, I can just click on the student's name and poof. Um, I now have um, class progress for, progress for this particular individual. So um, looking at the summary here just a little bit, you can see that I can sort by the last seven days, the last 30 days, or all time. So um, again, I said this was an older um, class I'd set up. So there's actually no one has any activity for the last seven or probably 30 days in here. So I'm going to leave it on all time. But just know Know that um, particularly this this week and next week, as you're in that first week or two of the class, um, this is a great way to filter out those who are actually um, really attending your class and those who may just be hanging out on your roster. Now, a couple other things I want to point out. We're here on this summary page, and you can see I have grades, content, discussions. Scroll a little bit. Dropbox, um, quizzes. And again, you can expand these as you, uh, if you want to see more detail. So like the five messages, I can see uh, the messages here. And then um, I have checklist, and then also the login history. So here I can see that this individual logged in, you know, 52 times. And uh, I can see the differential between the system access, like when they actually just logged into D2L in general, versus when they last accessed the course. So again, um, pretty handy to have this information. Um, I can actually go to the settings page here. If I click settings, I can toggle these indicators on or off. So you know, I'm not really using a checklist in this course, so I'll turn that off. Um, and I'm not really using surveys or objectives, so I have those turned off as well. I can also change the threshold and the color for the um, progress indicators that we saw on that um, class progress page. So in this case, I've chosen to give what I look like a, a green light to students who are at 80% and above. And if I have some concerns about a student, I'm making that 65 to 80%. And then at risk is zero up to that 65%. So you could redefine those any way you want and, and customize those. Uh, I'll go back to the screen here. And um, you can also email the students directly from here. Or um, it says send an instant message. If you sent that message, they would get a little notification up here in the um, notifications area. So email is probably the better, better choice for you. Um, I can also page through students. So I can click on my next student if I want to do it that way. And once again, I can drill down into the detail for this student's activity. Still, I have those live previews here of the different assignments and the different scores. So that's really handy. And also, I can dig deeper over here on the left-hand side. So if I want to see just a grade report, for example, I can click on grades. And once again, I have way more information than I've ever had before um, in terms of the visual visualization of these grades. Content is perhaps where this is the most handy, I think. So if I click on the content tool, I can see um, the different modules here and the different topics. So um, for example, if I go to um, the introduction piece, I can expand these four topics within that module and see, OK, this person has visited these first three because I can see the check marks. But the circle indicates that they never visited this last topic. So again, if you're trying to diagnose what's happening with a student in one of your classes, why they might not be doing as well as they could, you have a lot of power here in this um, tool. 
um, discussions progress also gives you the same uh, breakdown. So I can see not only how many messages in general um, they've read, authored, or replied to, but I can see within each forum how many um, that they've done within those topics. So for example, that 104 looks really impressive until I realized that 48 of those that were read were in introductions. That's great, but I might have wanted them to read um, something in a different section instead. So uh, you have a tremendous amount of power to drill down within um, this tool here. Uh, the Dropbox is similar. I note that I said there were two Dropboxes available. So um, we have 50% submissions, one out of two assignments turned in. The first one, or the one that was turned in is this course outline. And I can just click details here to see um, my feedback and to see that actual assignment as well. So pretty handy um, to have. So that's how you could dr um, drill down on the individual student progress. And again, I can print here. Um, I can print that progress report um, and customize that to show certain um, pieces. So if I want to print a progress report for a student and show them you know, their Dropbox quiz and um, discussions only, or maybe I only want to show them their um, grades, I can show them the summary or the details and now I have um, a listing of their grades in the course. So again, a really super handy feature here for you. Um, and we had a question. Can you disaggregate the content for the whole class to get average use for each topic? Um, that's a great question. And let me go back here in this print view. Let me get out of the print view. So here we are in content. And again, I'm, I'm at an individual student view here. So I can follow my breadcrumb here back to class progress. And um, here it's really going to show me uh, more of the breakdown by user. So even if I click on a, a, on a report here for the user, I think that's going to take me right back. Yeah, it takes me back to that user. There's another place, though, where you can get that information, and that's super handy um, and let me see if we've got it set up in this course so if you wanted to look at progress through content so for example maybe students are um, missing certain questions on a quiz and you want to go back and say gee did anybody read the piece about uh, you know such and such within content itself uh, let me see here so it used to be in content and they might have moved it on me um, I think if you go back to edit course and report, let's take a look there. It's a good question. <laughs> and it, I know the functionality is here, it's just that it's kind of moved around a little bit. There we go. OK, here we are. So if you go to content, and then you have to make sure to click on this table of contents, which gives you a listing of everything here. Um, you can click on related tools and view reports. And this is another super handy piece. So right now, um, we're viewing statistics by content area. So, for example, here's um, content. Here's a module called Introduction. Um, it's expanded automatically, which is kind of nice. And I can see the number of users who have visited that. So out of the, let's say there are 30 in my course, I only have 12 who visited that particular um, piece. This is super handy, particularly when you're looking at things like the course syllabus. And you want to say, OK, <laughs> you know, out of my 35 students in the class, Gee, only 12 of them have you know, downloaded the syllabus. We might want to go over that in class a little bit. Um, and you can click on these um, as well to see who actually has looked at that. So again, gives you the ability to see who hasn't. And how about this? You can click those names for the students who haven't looked at it. And from right here, you can generate an email to those students and say, whoop. 
There we go. So um, super handy to view by content. You can also, within reports, uh, let me go back a page here. You can view it by user as well. So this is a little bit different view than what you get in class progress. But for example, I can look at this list and pretty quickly, just by looking at names um, and the number of content topics visited, I can see who is, again, more engaged in the course versus those um, who have, for example here, not viewed any content at all. So um, I would encourage you to um, use that, uh, that. And again, that was from content, table of contents, and then under related tools, um, view reports. That, that takes you to that piece. So you really have a lot of power to um, you know, monitor engagement It'd be nice to kind of pull these two together so you have, have it um, even in another, uh, more in one spot. I want to go back to the class progress here for one second and show you how to change what you see on this screen here. So I've chosen, because these are the, the dominant tools that I would be using this course, I've chosen to display content, discussions, Dropbox folders, and grades. You can customize this. So what you do is just go to the settings link here, click settings. And then it shows you the indicators that you have displayed right now. And again, these are just kind of samples that are in here. Um, let's say that I really, uh, maybe I don't use um, discussion boards. So I want to swap that out for a different um, indicator. I can just come over here to this little action, we call this an action menu, this little triangle um, options menu. And I can either move this or replace it. So for this one, I'm going to replace it. And when I click replace, I'm presented with um, the indicators that are not currently in use, right? So I can choose from any of these to add that to my dashboard. So let's say instead of um, the discussion boards, I want to put um, quiz performance on there. So I'll click quiz performance. Poof, there it is. And let's say instead of looking at grade performance, I want to show, um, click replace here. I want to show the login history right on that dashboard page. I can click here and, and note, um, by default, it's the last 30 days. You can't modify that, so um, just keep that in mind. But now I have content, quiz, Dropbox, and login history. I'll hit save. And now when I go back to my dashboard, it looks quite a bit different. Again, I can see the content topics. Um, I can see quiz information. And again, this, in this particular class, there weren't a lot of quizzes. Dropbox folders are still there. And look at this, though. I, I think this is such a handy indicator to be able to see, you know, there's some real flat periods where there were no logins to B2L. And then as we get into this particular date range, suddenly, you know, just visually at a glance, I can see what's happening. So um, that's kind of a handy tool. And, you know, you can customize this to suit your own course. Now, if you want to reorder these, which you certainly can do, again, it's just a quick trip over here to settings. And then let's say we want to move the login history to the top or to the front column. Simply click the little uh, action menu here and say move up. And then we're just going to move it up a couple times <laughs> because it's just front position. And now save and close. And now we have login history up here at the front. So just right off the bat, you know, if I'm teaching an online class and I've told my students that they have to log in and complete some activities, you know, before Friday of the first week or something like that, Friday comes around and I need to clean up my roster, I can just come right here and see, boom, no login, no login, no login. Um, and that helps me to understand um, who may not be left really working in my class. So again, um, I encourage you to use this you have a few filtering capabilities here as well. You can filter um, if you have different groups in your course um, or sections. You can filter this by section, which is really handy. Um, and you can also search for individual um, users here. So for example, we'll do a search for a single student. That way I'm, I can look just individually without getting sort of bogged down with all of the extra um, visualizations that are going on. So that, in a nutshell, is, is class progress. And uh, 
you have any questions, go ahead and, and this is a great time to put those into the pod. Um, and I would remind you once again that um, we do have those drop-in sessions. They're Monday through Friday. And um, you know, Monday, basically Monday and Thursday mornings from 10 to noon, Tuesday and Wednesday afternoons from 1 to 3, and then uh, Friday mornings from 10 to noon also. And if you need uh, individualized assistance outside of those times, you can just contact us and we will um, certainly make an appointment for you. Um, and we do have a question about whether or not you can export data to Excel. Um, Excellent question. At this point, the dashboard itself, um, that data cannot be um, extracted. But if we go back over to content, uh, hopefully this doesn't make a liar out of me. I'm going to go back to table of contents and related tools, view reports. And then here, we're looking at the statistics for content. Um, and again, so this is really only going to be for content. I can export the statistics to Excel. For, to Excel for either the content or um, by user. It's just a simply a, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's only for content. Yeah. So I just click the export button here. D2L will create, um, should be a little zip file for, for me. It's pretty quick. Download those and then um, they go into a CSV file. And whew, here's all of my um, data for each content item students. So you can um, play with that and see what you can get it to do. The last thing I would say is you can also export your grade data. So if you want to go to grades, uh, there's an export button here where you can pretty much do the same thing. Um, you can choose which ones you want to export and which details you want to send with that. All right, so that pretty much concludes our, our workshop here. And um, if you have any questions, please do be in touch with us. And um, again, let me pull up, uh, there's our drop-in lab hours and the ways to reach us. And hope you had a great session and we'll see you back next week.